do the CCPS applications window right here. Load this up, go to science, and then double click Vernier Logger Light. It takes a couple minutes to load up, so I've already clicked it. I'm waiting for it patiently to load up. As you can see, the wheel is spinning. And there she is. Logger Light's coming up. Now, nothing's going to show up until I plug in a USB probe device, which in this case is drumroll motion, the go motion. All right. Okay, we're going to use the go motion. We're going to, as previously set up, a meter stick on the floor or some marks to mark off meters for students to uh, use to back up and make reference to their motion as we make a graph. Okay. Now, as I hit the space bar, it is recording data. It's recording me backing up. The graph goes up and going down. So we can easily make the connection that as I move away, the distance goes up and away. As I come back, it's going to go back down. So I'm going to try to go faster this time. I'm going to go again. I'm going to go back. Then I'm going to come forward. I'm going to go back. And I've created a little mountain. Okay? Now, one of the things I mentioned in other trainings is that you can change the time of data collection using the shortcut Control D. I change this from five seconds. Let's make it 10. 10 is a little bit more reasonable. And. If I do another data collection, I back up slowly, come all the way back up, and I have enough time to make, ta-da, the letter M. Yay. So, good challenge for students to see how to make the letter M. The second challenge might be the letter W. Tricky, tricky. Here I click the filing cabinet up there to store it. So now I can do another trial right on top of that trial. So I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm um, not really sure if I can make a W without stepping out and in, back, back. There you go. So negating that section. If I had two people or somebody to help me, I could be already standing right here. Now for students to make this connection in the graph where they need to understand that in order to start my W up here, I need to actually start at a distance away from the motion sensor so that I can create this type of graph. This is a fun challenge to do. This can be done even at the desk. If they have this, and they have this plugged into a computer or a lab quest, they can even do this with their hand doesn't have to be a whole whole body movement in front of the class, um, depending on your lab or activity. So I can set this like this, I can use a book, I can use any number of things to create letters or a certain type of graph. Now another thing you can do is you can you can create a graph ahead of time that they have to match. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So let's see I just dump this. And I also have to change my time again. Control D, I'm going to change that 5 to a 10. And then I'm going to use the pencil, which is predict. Okay. So once I have this pencil up here, let's say I want to have a student come to 1.5 meters for three seconds, then to zero. Then back up to one and then stay at one. Okay, now this is my prediction drawing. Now, this is a real challenge for you. So, uh, if I wanted to try and do this right now, I probably should have made the challenge easier for myself because now I have to get way over here. Let's see how this goes. Oh, now I've got my one. Come all the way in. Back all the 
the way up and stop. Oop, oop, and stay right there. Yeah, not bad. Okay. So I've done my graph prediction. I've tried to uh, emulate and uh, match this so I can to practice my connection between graphing, little wave graphing, and uh, movement. Okay, this is probably the easiest thing to do with movement. The rest of the probe wear is uh, a little more tricky, like let's say with temperature. Okay, so. Do a new one. Change this out. This time I'm going to use a Go Link. Once I use my Go Link, plug that in. It recognizes it. And I can use Force Sensor. The force Sensor is already set up for 10 seconds. It. Put it back in there. Okay. So, force sensor. Pull out, goes up. Push in, goes down, out, in, out. Look at that, great letters again. How about that? Okay. Pretty cool there. Let's try a little more. Out, hold, 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 in, hold, 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 out, and in, okay? Um, the door range force sensor can use to weigh things, to put things in a baggie, and then I'll weigh this, hook it on the bag, and I can get a mass for this item, whatever it is, inside the bag. Okay, just a little reminder there. The other thing uh, that force sensors can be used for, is collisional forces. So using this bumper system, which all the force sensors have somewhere, you don't necessarily have to use it. You can crash into the um, the ring. Okay, you can crash into this, or we can use the bumper, or we can just put an eraser on top of that, and it's done. So if I want to measure how uh, a car, you know, racing down a ramp and colliding with this, and how much force, different uh, heights of a ramp or different masses of cars, or um, you know, any type of, of collisional force spike, which is just going to show up as a boom, just like that. And to show you what that looks like, let me do that real quick. So, race and continue. There we go. So I'm collecting data, and then boom, there's my force of impact. Boom, there's another one, okay? Now we have a little issue here because the data is starting at six. So this is a good time to go ahead and fix this. We're going to um, calibrate, no, sorry, zero. So now it's gonna start at zero, okay? So boom, I just hit something. Oh, I just hit something again. So I have three impacts. What might be interesting is to do a bouncing ball. Like, let's just say you put this on the floor. I've got a ball. Okay. Uh, there's two settings on this, which I'm seeing is probably a necessary thing here. We've got 10 newtons and 50 newtons. I'm going to go ahead and change that to 50 and try the bouncing ball thing again with my hand. And try this again. Race and continue. I'm going to go. I got a bouncing ball. Slash bouncing hand. Okay. Just another idea. Just thought of that. That's why it's not looking so well. So just something to try out. And. The last sensor I wanted to show you was the temperature sensor. Now most sensors uh, that you have at your school will have the regular white, but if you have the Go Temp, which is the USB, you can plug that directly into the computer and start collecting data. Now students can do this on their computers as well, or the student computers, 
and they can use the Lava and Light program and, uh, and do that on there as a station or whatever you prefer. The other thing is, is uh, in the lab quest, there is a USB port on top. So you run out of temperature sensors, you don't have enough, you can actually just plug this one in here and it will work on the lab quest. Okay. So if I unplug my Go Link, make a new one, and I plug in my Go Temp, I should see temperature show up. Ta da! Okay. Now this is going to go for a really long time. We've already started the temperature collection. This is roughly room temperature. Grab my hand. Temperature starts going up. Now, if I, because this is going to go for so long, I can touch this. A scale stands for auto scale. You can auto scale as the graph is being formed. Okay, so we can watch this graph go up. Same concept as with the motion sensor. I can show a graph being formed in the class. Watch this graph climb up as I hold it with my hand. I can have two uh, glasses or you know beakers of water, a hot beaker and a cold beaker, and I can put this in the hot one. We can watch it go up, and I can put it in the cold one. We can watch it go down. We do the same type of activity with this as well, where we're trying to create a letter or some sort of other challenge, like a prediction. Like I want, I want to have this temperature graphs start at a certain temperature and let's say the students need to find that temperature with the water what what ratio of really hot water to ice cubes is going to give that starting temperature and then have that go down to freezing or up to some other thing. Creating a challenge like this tricks the students into learning uh, lab techniques and graphing and they having fun with the software as opposed to you know going through your basic step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, uh, and even longer, and pages and pages of, of LabQuest documents, or you can create a challenge with just a picture of a graph and say, hey, what is it gonna take for you to match this graph? And it gets students to critically think about the graph and critically think about how to, to create that data set. So if you're, if you're creating a data set, rather than to, well, creating a data set to match data, you can trick them into learning, in a sense. Okay, so here we have the temperature going down, just as I'm talking, and I can make it go up again pretty fast. So uh, pretty simple ways to use this, this software here. So we have a lot of light. Um, if I finish this data set, stop it here. I can store it using the filing cabinet. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and store that in case I want to do another one on top. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start the next graph. Just so you can see, it's going to show up in a different color. Okay, we've got the blue graph that's going to go down here. And I can go on, I can make it go up. Okay, pretty quickly. You can watch this in real time. Okay, this is a, a very important tool to, to utilize because um, it's so skimmy. All right. Uh, after we, uh, let's say we take some data, another thing we can do is we can insert a text annotation. So, once I put this box in here, I can uh, type it up. I can say, so, um, call this Mr. West. And then this one is, let's say I want to call this one another annotation. Call this Mr. Blue. All right, now once it's here, I can drag drag this point around here, and I can manipulate these things so I can label the data set, okay? And so if you have student names, you want to you title their names um, here, we can do that as well. Okay, another, another interesting thing here is you can switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. So if you wanted to just do that with the click of a button, you can see exactly how hot I am in Fahrenheit and have that comparison and switch it right back to Celsius, which is a, it's a good thing to see visually the differences between the two. Because um, in science we always do use Celsius, but for uh, most students they need to see that connection in Fahrenheit. Um, a little bit more Let's say we want to examine this. 
I can drag this along any point in the line and I can see exactly what this point is. So if I put it right here, you can see that that temperature is 79.2 and at what time that was. And this one I was 87. So this, this goes through the whole graph. And when I put it over there's, where there's two lines, I'm also getting two points at the same, at the same time. So showing there, um, if I have two temperatures and I'm trying to do two experiments at once, I can see at which time and which temperature they are comparatively. So it's, a, it's another useful thing. Just using examine, it looks a lot more complicated than it is. It's just a line that shows the data set. Now let's not forget our data table here. The data table is showing uh, the time and that every moment in time where the temperature was taken. So this is at every half second interval. Now if you're going to do this by hand, you couldn't obviously do that. If you were going to do it with a stopwatch, it would be really difficult to uh, take that many data points. So um, if I just slide over, I can see the red data points that go in much longer. You can scroll those down at, at those seconds. Okay, so same thing with the temperature. If I want to do a prediction curve, say I want to do a new, um, I can take the prediction, I can draw a prediction. Let's say I think it's going to start around here and then go up. And then I'm going to go ahead and try that. And look at that, it's pretty close. And I probably don't really have the patience to wait for this, but I could certainly make it go up to follow that curve. This is, again, not exactly the best whole group activity to watch a temperature line creep up ever so slowly, but for individual students um, at, or at a station to try and get them to match this would be a, an interesting challenge depending on the level of those kids. Um, and these are just three of the probes that are easily and readily available. So the force sensor, the go motion, and the... Uh, Go temp. The last one I'm going to pull out is a monitor or wind. This one the uh, go link. Fun stuff. All right. I believe that's about it. So to review, this is logger light. We've gone over um, three main sensors. settings here as well. One's for car, one's for people and ball. Okay. This is the echo location, go motion. Got the dual range force sensor. Great for 
uh, an easy to use scale to weigh things in class uh, using the Ziploc baggie with a hole punch in it. Change this to 10 for weighing things in class, 50 for uh, a little bit more forceful. Now these things are pretty tough again, so um, you know you can also have kids um, you know, squeeze it, pull it. You know they can really, really test these things out. They're they're pretty strong, especially if you put it on the 50 sen sensor setting. Um, they can really uh, pull on these. Okay, they're pretty tough. So if you're doing a, a human body or a muscle type thing and you want to test the strength of all their fingers, they can. You can put a little string on there hook this onto the table and then you know they can lift with each of their fingers on each of their hands and they can record the, uh, the strength of their fingers or they can even record the backward strength of their fingers and there's all kinds of stuff you can do with just this probe and, uh, and a little data collection for fun and then the go temp useful for liquids um, taken outside, soil temperature, uh, temperature of a shirt you can lay it on a shirt if you're outside you want to see how hot different colors of shirts are, <coughs> or paper, you can lay it on paper, lay it underneath paper. Um, you can sandwich it in little paper pockets to see you know, what temperature those different colors of paper are. And all this, is, this ties back to nature of science. You can do this any time of year. Let's say you're getting a little antsy in, in December and thinking about um, what type of activities you can be doing to, uh, to you know, have fun with science in your science block. Um, now these, again, tie back to nature of science. You can do nature of science any time in the year, and uh, any time you're sort of hitting a rut, you felt like you haven't done anything fun in a while, take out the probe wearer. It's not the worst thing you can do. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, take out your lab quests, fire them up, plug something in, and just, just have it sitting out. Just have it out for, you know, students to, to use at a station, let's say they have some extra time, we'll say, guess what? You know, this extra time station today, you're going to be able to test your finger strength, and they're going to be able to go through this. So your students that get done early, um, they can they can go do this activity. Now, since I, again, on on this one, I'm just noticing that it's registering a force when there's no force. So what do I do? I go up here to sensors and go to zero. Okay. So I just zero it, and now it goes down to zero. So now I'm recording accurate data. If I pull on this, it's my pinky, and I can measure the newtons of my pinky on my other finger, my middle finger, okay? Um, and that's just a simple activity to do with the lab quest and the dual range force sensor. All right, um, I think that's about it. So again, time is back to nature of science and uh, having some fun in science class at any grade, um, K, 5, 6, 7, 8, doesn't matter. Um, these materials are available to you in the new time. You can't come up with something. Just um, send us an email, and uh, Linda and I can help you out. So that's it. And if you have any questions, just holler. Have fun. So this little tutorial is about uh, how best to use the dual range force sensor. So here's my dual range sensor, and uh, I just plug it in any one of these, does not matter, and it will pop up. So right off the bat, I'm reading negative 5.9 newtons. Now, nothing's happening here. I'm not pulling on it. I'm not touching it. So we're going to do a quick zero. So we're going to do a zero, and dual range force. So now it's down to zero. So now when I push on it, it shows a negative force. When I pull on it, it's going to show a positive force. Now, 
you can use just this first screen of the lab press. It's okay. You don't always have to go to this and do a graph. Because why would I want to do a graph when I'm just when I'm just pulling on it? You know, I can do this to show positive and negative forces and pushes and pulls, but there's really for certain things it's okay, and then for other things, let's just use the first screen. Okay, so let's say I want to weigh something. Okay, so I've pulled this up and I want to weigh, you know, my pinky. So I'm pulling down here, and uh, so let's say my, the weight of my pinky in my hand just resting is 4.3 you know, newtons. So a lot of times you can just have students count to, count to three. So you're weighing something, because even the number is jumping around a little bit here. Just count to three, and whatever number that's on, um, you just take that number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, uh, I don't even know if that's accurate, but let's just say that it was. All right, so then that's, that's how I can do a quick single point measurement. It doesn't have anything to do with time, because I'm just using this to weigh something, okay? Um, if I was weighing something, like, I'm just going to weigh this other force sensor. Lifting it up, holding it still, and it's just jumping around a tiny bit. And it's settled out at 1.75, I'll call it. Okay? So if I am weighing something, that'll be that. So, uh, and the other thing is about Newton's. Newton's is the force due to gravity. Okay? Force of pull of the mass in relationship to the gravitational pull of the Earth. So everything in the Earth and on the Earth is being pulled by gravity uh, by the mass of the Earth because the Earth is so big and massive. It's pulling on us. So uh, the way I explain this is um, in space, you can be weightless. So the difference between weight and mass is pretty simple. In space, you're weightless but your mass is always uh, the same. So your uh, relative mass can be different on planets due to different gravitational pull, but our, our standard mass is gonna be the same no matter where we go. Our weight can change ever so slightly. So um, when, you, when you have to explain that, and what the N stands for, like why are we using pounds or ounces or grams or kilograms, well, Newton's is a force of, it, it's, it's because of that force to gravity. So um, things can be weightless in Newton's in space. So uh, the other thing that you can do with this force sensor is um, this little, adding this little push bumper onto here by taking the hook off. And this should be available in your materials. Uh, you can set this on a ramp and have a car, turn this into a car, and boom, and it hit that, and we can measure the impact of the car on, on that. Or, let's say you're building a bridge, and um, you're going to test the amount of force you can push down on a bridge. So you build a bridge, uh, let's say a toothpicks, or popsicle sticks, or spaghetti, or whatever it is, you can push down ever so slightly until the bridge breaks. And then, uh, you know, then you know the force if you're recording the time of that break. So that's, that's another way to use that. And, uh, or if you're gonna hook masses onto a bridge to test the project, you know, you wanna test how much force it takes before it, it finally snaps. That's this one like, technological way to um, you know, test the strength of a bridge or as opposed to putting a hook and then putting weights in a bucket. So um, it's just something to consider that. And that is the basics of the forces.
Perhaps I should stop.